The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 738 Two Times Around Sinisei! No, Felicity sniffed, completely hunched over Sinisei's body in the stairwell. Sinisei! Valet managed to unfreeze first, whirling on Gazelle. Hey! What did you do that for? Stay out of this, Gazelle warned, reaching the bottom of the stairs. All of you. This is between me, Lord Jaya, and my free wayward minions. It has nothing to do with you, and you want it to stay that way. Larceny placed a restraining, shaking hoof on Valet's back as well. He's right. Sinisei, Felicity continued weeping. Bananas do all of this! These are my friends! Valet glared at the prince, taking a step forward anyway. You lay one claw of them on our boat or anywhere else, and it's personal, buddy. You've just messed with the wrong Whoa! Suddenly, Valet's legs locked up, and she pitched forward and went sprawling on her face. Ow! What the- Sorry, Larceny apologized, withdrawing her hoof. Nobody move. Gazelle is right. We were in deep with both him and Jire and many others as well. And if that takes us down right when we were almost free, you are not going down with us. She kept her voice even, bangs hiding her eyes, and the rest of her face dark and pained. What is the meaning of this? Shinesbuck demanded, not advancing, but holding a ready stance. Explain to me why there are multiple ponies dead on my floor within seconds of each other. Gazelle gave a tortured, exasperated sigh, pointedly louder than Felicity sobbing. You want a pretty, friendly version? She nobly sacrificed herself to rid the world of a greedy Claude who was down here for who knows why. I just spared her a much more painful execution by Gashiva and all of you are witnesses who can testify the other two had nothing to do with it, and, if they're lucky, let them not suffer for their sister's mistake. He reloaded his gun. But right now, I'm not feeling terribly rational, and the explanation that these three got high on friendship and offed their former employer while forgetting who they still work for sounds so much more appealing. Larceny growled, but held her ground. Let me up, you idiot! He's gonna shoot Felicity! Valet struggled against her floppy legs, unable to rise or get any traction. <coughs> Gazelle twirled his weapon, giving Valet a stand-down look. As he did, Felicity looked up, craning her head over her shoulder as she coddled Senesee's body. Don't? Even think about it, Felicity warned. Who? Me? Gazelle stepped up in her face, grinning like a predator who was forced to settle for a smaller kill than he wanted and prepared to make up for it. Oh, I don't think so. You? He sank his claws into her shoulder, pulled her bodily off of Sanisei, and threw her on her back, earning a cry of pain. You've just scuttled... Years of effort spent trying to corral this unruly empire and present my sister with a nation that's worthy of her inheritance instead of a bunch of simple-minded, infighting slobs like the one you couldn't let live however many more paltry months it would take. We were on the doorstep of victory. To punctuate his point, he shoved the paw down on Felicity's barrel, pinning her in place. No. Let go! Felicity gasped at the pressure, struggling to remove his leg from her midsection. Fool! Get off her! Valet roared, flopping on the floor like a fish. Stop! Shinesbuck warned, lighting her horn. These two are under asylum from Einridge. Gazelle wasn't listening to either of them. His pupils had shrank to slitted pinpricks and were slowly widening until they filled his entire eyes, an expression of kitten-like joy overtaking his face. Aha! <laughs> That's it! We can fix this! You're brilliant! He grabbed Felicity by the shoulders, lifted her until she was dangling completely off the ground and nuzzled her hard. 
that little illicit storm of fall of yours, Gerobaldi is being such a coward about owning up to, is now officially a product of your unscrupulous liaisons with the recently deceased. Congratulations, you're growing the new Lord Jaya. Valet felt Velicity's calming aura flicker faintly, but it was unable to manifest in her shocked state. After the last few minutes' events, she couldn't even speak. Everything is better, Gazelle sang, mood swinging like the jibe on a shipmast. He flipped Felicity on his back, still too stunned to move, then pounced atop Lord Gyre's corpse in the engine room door. Now all we have to do is get all the evidence back to the castle, let things explode, let things settle, Probably get poor little you quarantined so you don't run away with Jaya's Aya. I don't have to take that miserable job. He started dragging the big carcass towards the stairs. How lovely! Shinespark looked like she was going to be sick. Harshwater watched him passively, Gerardo had vanished, and Valet kept shouting on the floor. Larceny frowned. So you're taking both of my sisters instead of just one? Gazelle carelessly shrugged. Oh, you can have her back, eventually. After, I'm not the new Lord Jaya and have bored all the time I need. And me? Larceny raised an eyebrow. <laughs> Who cares what you do, Gazelle spat. You're free, out of this whole mess. That's what I was initially coming here to arrange, wasn't it? Go run around and enjoy your life, or something. Larceny watched him coldly and evenly. I hate you. Many do. Gazelle smugly got the corpse held in a way he was happy with, then dragged it over to Senesei. Fortunately, leaving bitter rivals is a habit of mine. It tends to provide good entertainment for whenever they catch up. See you around. With that, he leaned down, clasped the scruff of Senesei's neck in his jagged teeth, and lifted her too. His wings spread on the landing, and in an immense show of aerial power, he lifted off, soaring through the door and into the night with Felicity and both bodies in tow. Get back here! Valet screamed, flailing. Gazelle! What just happened? Shinesbuck whispered, horn going dim as her demeanor started to crack. The worst day of my life. Larceny's head turned down and she walked limply towards the library chairs. With a rush of wings, Gazelle braved a storm, soaring past dozens of ships until he landed on another, dropping the bodies and strolling up the bang on the door. Honey, I'm home! The door opened to reveal Meltdown in her sleek post-pirate ship armor. The teleportation guild is ready, as are the power distribution stations. How did it go? About as planned, Felicity sighed, slipping off Gazelle's back and landing on her hooves. She gave both of them a warning glance, going to sit by Senesei. Valet will have all of our heads for this, you know. You underestimate her if you think she'd settle for anything less. Meltdown moved to check Senesei as well, feeling for a pulse, and then checking breathing. The rain is bringing her about. Should we wait until she's awake before leaving? Felicity shook her head. Larceny is good at her job. She'll buy us the time we need. I just hope you two are ready. Tonight, it's do or die. Ha! You leave that to me. Gazelle's eyes sparkled. This night is going to be perfect. Odds oh, that she survived? Zero. Larceny covered her eyes with her mane, Shinespark standing across from her and not knowing what to do. We know our weapons, and that one was designed to kill. And even if it hadn't been a perfect shot at point blank, do you think he'd let her live? You heard what he said. Someone needs to take the blame for Lord Gyre, and better her than all of us. Better her than all of you? Shinespark whispered. You can casually think that about your own sister's death? Larceny faintly shrugged. Growing up in Jaya does things to a pony. You're not likely to see me weeping and making a show of mourning. I'm sorry if that bothers you. It's the way I am. Yeah, 
Well, you don't speak for all of us. Valet was aggressively flopping towards her, making painstaking progress. Now let me up this instant. Bananas, we gotta go after them and see Felicity. We? Larceny frowned. I probably will once they've lowered their guard, but not you. Larceny is right, Harshwater apologized. This is the way things are in a war zone. They're gone, and if Felicity comes back, it won't be for anything we do. That's just a reality you have to learn to live with. Shinesburg fixed her with a shaken glare. But my ship is not a war zone. Those aren't the rules we want to live by. Harshwater coolly met her gaze. Nobody wants to live in a war zone, but being invaded gives you no choice. The only way to keep your sanity is to accept that and move on. I know what ponies look like who can't. Bananas, let me up! Valet continued to flail. Larceny just sighed. See to what you can see too. That's how it works. I'm sorry. How what works? A sightless starlet asked, standing in the hallway. Valet shot her a look, ceasing her struggles momentarily. Go back to your room, kid. Stuff's happening out here. I'm aware, Glimmer said, wandering up to Larceny and Valet. She stared the blue mare straight in the eye, somehow knowing exactly where she was without eyesight. It was loud. We all heard. We're all worried, and Starlight is this close to going to do something about it herself, because that's what she does when nobody else can. Oh, I could, if only someone would turn my legs back on. Valet glared up at Larceny. Hello, you remember my resume, right? I've infiltrated Stormhub before, and I can do it again. Let me at him. Larceny frowned. Felicity just got taken to one of the most fortified castles on the continent. Fighting Gazelle and freeing her when she was here would have made every single one of us enemies of the Empire. Trying to get Felicity back now would do the same, whether you can get to the top of that tower and back or not. Like I said, I'm still considering it. It's easily possible thanks to Gazelle leaving the lights out for us. But being enemies of the state is not something I'm about to let you do. Yeah? Valet propped herself up as far as she could. And what if I want to? Bananas, this empire is dumb. It's given me a lot of garbage, is now giving my friends worse garbage, and I would rather steal Felicity back and punch Gazelle's dumb face and have to fly all the way back to Einridge and live out my life there than keel over and watch this happen to you. I'm serious. I want to do it. It's reckless and stupid and unnecessary, Larceny countered. You're not invading that tower for our sake. Vele grinned, eyes burning. Yeah, that's the point. It's also what I'm best at, and I just got a really big kick from a very good friend to put more faith in myself and my ability to pull stunts like this. So what if this is a test? Me versus the Empire? I'm down. I already cleaned two clocks at once in the tournament. What's a few hundred trained soldiers more? Harshwater looked slightly afraid. She's completely serious, she warned. She can, and she will. I've been on the other end of that fight before. Valet, uh, Scheinsberg hesitated. You know Felicity better than any of the rest of our crew. She nodded apologetically at Larceny. I don't know how much I trust her myself, but I do know injustice when I see it. Larceny, let her up. This is something she has to do. Larceny gave her an incredulous look. Attacking Stormhoof on our behalf, in full view of the Empire, when there could be an easier way by waiting since you know Felicity's life isn't on the line because Gazelle says he needs her foal. I don't know anything about her foal, Scheinsbach answered. I just know what my friend is capable of, and she's right. She made it up that tower once before, while crippled by a monk, and also while refusing to attack a single guard. Yeah, I was playing pacifist, Valle added. This time, if those Everlast goons are as bad as you say they are, I won't mind knocking a few heads. Let me up, please. From the hallway, Jam Jars cleared her throat, appearing behind Glimmer. You and your sisters killed the guy in the first place, didn't you? You were hasty, your mistake. So maybe you owe it to her as an apology to let her go beat everyone up? Uh, Larceny sighed loudly. 
We had a long history with Lord Gyre even after leaving his province twenty years ago, and none of us had any love for him before that either. That was personal business, and not anything to do with you. She looked down at Valet. Why are you trying to put yourself this far on the line for us? You could have to leave the Empire. I can't guarantee anything if you make an enemy of Gazelle. Valet blew a raspberry. So you three talked it over, decided you liked the way we do things enough to throw in the towel with Gazelle and come join us, yet you don't even know how we work well enough to remember that friends help friends? It's not every mare for herself here. You've got to be pulling my leg. Larceny winced. Think it over first. You're all in shock and not thinking clearly. Anyone healthy would be after witnessing that. Congratulations! No one ever said a flattering thing about my state of mind. Valet grinned. Come on, please. No. Pretty please? No, Larceny raised her voice. It's not worth it. Screw that and screw you. Valet's face hardened. Bananas, this is your sister on the line. Stop giving up on her. Larceny rolled over and faced the other way. Valet's brow furrowed in frustration, thinking of what to press next, when Crystal appeared in the hallway, looking intensely uncomfortable. I'm in labor, she announced. Please take me to Esvaldi. I need my Percival. Schoenspach blinked hard, staring at Crystal's swollen belly. This really isn't a good time. And this kind of thing doesn't care about convenience, Crystal growled, pressing a hoof to her womb. My child is coming! Glimmer was suddenly at Valet's side. She can unlock you, she whispered, loud enough that Larceny could hear. Sweet! Hey, Crystal! Valet's head shut up. Listen, Larceny just monked me, but if I can get unmonked, I've got a real important thing to do that involves this ship getting as far away from Stormhoof as possible, super fast, since it'll probably bring down some goons on our heads, including back to Isvaldi. A little help here? Crystal stared blankly at her, and before she could respond, Larceny's hoof reached down and tapped Valet's shoulder blades, and suddenly, her legs worked again. Fine, if you're going to be that stubborn about it, Larceny sighed, then put on a grim smile. Having some help would be welcome. I hope you enjoy being an outlaw. I don't know, Miss Vale Arts, Crystal said. Larceny growled and face huffed, but didn't try to stop Valet again. Glimmer winked, strolling away down the hall. Okay, quick planning. Valet hopped to her hooves, beginning to pace. We've got two ways of doing things. Being sneaky, since the lights are dim, and fighting our way through. I can do either, but let's say I've got my preference. Larceny and I are going, right? That leaves harsh water and... Who else knows what they're doing with you? She pointed a wing at Crystal. Amber might, Harshwater quickly offered. Neat! So you guys get the ship heading for Isvaldi, top speed! Valet nodded to Scheinspach. We're already ruining Gazelle's day with Lord Gyre, so it shouldn't be a big deal if Percival disappears with her and their kid. I'll take a soundstone, so we'll stay in touch, but you'll probably find us hiding out at Wallace's cave. After that, screw everything in this place, we're heading for Iron Ridge. Maybe we'll go to Yakakistan, who knows? Anywhere but here. Sound good? Do what you do best, Scheinspach nodded. Do you want Starlight Sword? Ah, uh, Valet winced. It's super strong, but kind of a liability too. Yeah, bananas, I'll take it. Sparky, give me that. Shine Spark quickly stepped away towards Starlet's room, and Valet nodded. Right, any last important ideas, anyone else? Crystal, you okay? Crystal was stuck in an extended grimace, wings wrapped around her belly. What does it look like? Just hurry. Right, hurry. Time to kick some faces. Valet grinned as Shinespark returned with the sword, exchanging it for a sudden surprise kiss on the cheek. Best for good luck. And I'll need my hat. Bring it, bad guys. Rain pummeled down around Valet as she rose like a specter in front of the gates the storm have keep. Beret tilted down to cover her eyes. A full platoon of Everlast guards braved the weather in wait, readying their spears as she approached. Who goes there after curfew? Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, Valet greeted, tilting up her cap before the old Griffin platoon. 
digging the emergency protocol, but I'm needed in the war room as soon as possible. Stand at attention and clear a path. Emergency protocol, one drilled. State your name and identity, another barked. No Cerosians are military officers. Lily rolled her eyes. So, whoever was supposed to be briefing you is slacking, eh? Lord Jire was just assassinated. Something about a dispute with the mayor who's in charge of making out for the completely embarrassing way there are no lights in this place? Felicity, she just got fired for it, I'm the hire to replace her, and every second you loud slow me down, this castle could be in danger of a Sarosian pirate invasion. The guards blinked at one another. Lord Jaya was assassinated? All the more reason to stick the protocol, another decided. No Sarosians, and no admittance after dock. You'll have to go for official channels, ma'am. Welp, I try to do things the nice way. Valley's eyes gleamed. And buddy, believe me, I'm as official as they come. She dove into the shadows, swimming beneath the guards and their rain-extinguished torches, clear to the other side of the door. As several panicked shouts erupted from the other side of the locked doors, Valet loudly laughed, giving away her position, then swam upward on a darkened inner door panel. Clicking sounds came from the lock mechanism as she climbed higher, before slipping through the crack between the majestic double doors and dropping on her unsuspecting opponents from above. Swing! One circular slash felled every last one of them, Valet landing neatly and resheaving her sword. Congratulations, she declared, standing among the paralyzed. You dudes are under attack. Wouldn't wanna be, huh? Let's see here. She picked out the smallest griffiness in the pack, held them up, quickly ensured their everlast uniform was undamaged, and then stripped them off it, putting it on herself. How do I look? Valet asked a stunned, disrobed griffin, taking a moment to pose. Hmm, cheesy. Feels a little low quality. Meh, you look cuter without this. See ya. With that, Valet was gone. The entrance hall to Stormhoof was long, high-ceilinged, and dark, with several dormant chandeliers spaced equally down its vaulted ceiling. Valet spread her wings, soaring to a third-story balcony, before ducking into a corridor with a flat roof. Not about to waste time looking for a staircase, she stabbed the sword into the ceiling, swept it in an inverted cone, and dodged out of the way as a huge chunk of rock crashed free, almost masked by a peal of thunder. Yeah! Going up in the world! Valet flipped through the opening into another corridor, Right into the faces of a line of marching guards, the griffins were dumbstruck by someone carving away the floor from below, and before they could react, she stabbed the leader in the face and shoved her into the others. Yeah, Wouldn't wanna be ya! Valet darted forward, pressing her sword like a skewer for the narrow space, as the guards piled up like dominoes, utterly unable to avoid her. She landed behind them with a flourish, leaving a pile that nearly blocked the corridor. Wow, you're all terrible! Or oh, this thing's strong! Maybe I should use it more often! One griffin she had somehow missed lunged at her from the pile, and without even looking, she flipped into a spin, roundhousing him in the face. Rather than stab this one too, Valet pinned him against the wall, breathing against his face. Fastest way to the top! Where is it? The griffin started to hyperventilate. I'm a new recruit! This is my first deployment out of the academy! Please don't kill me! Fastest? Stairs. Valet snaked her head from side to side, preventing him from looking anywhere else. The griffin immediately lost control of himself, pointing a wink to the right and sobbing. Wuss. Valet got up and walked away. The corridor quickly ended in a room that was two stories high, leaving a tempting ceiling for her to carve another hole in. Valet launched into a storage room, making another hole and finding herself in a dressing room, suddenly keenly aware of how much her dripping stolen uniform was doing to help her bluster her way through. Hmm. Emergency meeting, call to order. Gazelle tapped a gavel, standing piously behind Lord Stormhove's desk in the war room at the top of the tower. Several of the seats were filled by sleepy-eyed Stormhove generals, though no other sphinxes were present save for Gondola's gyre's giant corpse. You can probably see why. 
Important detail, Gazelle, a stern-looking general said. When, where, and how? The chair recognizes General Gorgenheim, Gazelle replied, bowing curtly. Within the hour, I found his body on a random dock, and a poisoned throwing knife, the kind regularly employed by assassins in Jaya itself. But you see, I'm much more interested in the who and the why. That's for a trial to decide, the bushy-browed Gorgenheim replied, as well as whether it was your fault so you could inherit his province. Gazelle almost gagged. Oh, please! Who wants to rule a dump like Jaya? That's actually why I dragged his corpse up here now, instead of waiting like a reasonable person for morning. There's a slight hitch with me assuming rulership of Jaya, you see. You're speaking to an audience that doesn't care, son, General Gorgenheim dismissed. That's decided by the Council of Lords. Gazelle sighed and leaned frustratedly on the desk. Fine. We'll wait for more royalty to arrive. Oh, <laughs> Willie chuckled. Having devoted five seconds to cutting the uniform off, a minute to drying her fur and straightening her mane, and thirty seconds more to scanning the room's available dresses. Whatever psychological advantage she would give herself, she would take, even with all the sword's power. And with the level of training the enemies she had matched so far displayed, getting stomped by someone in a dress would be either so eye-catching or so demoralizing, they might just stop fighting altogether. Yep! This one's good! I dig it! Valise squirmed into a sparkly black tube dress that hugged her chest and had a high slit for her cutie mark, yet the train and leggings weren't quite long enough to trip her. She did several flips, testing her mobility, and nodded contentedly. Was she having too much fun showing off, being rude to her opponents, and not taking a castle invasion seriously? Probably. Larceny had likely left her behind long ago, but like Larceny had said, Felicity wasn't in mortal danger as long as Gazelle needed her foal. If this was her parting gift to the Griffin Empire, she wanted every loser who crossed her path to feel it. She burst out of the dressing room, running with quieted hoofsteps and relying on her cutie mark to steer her towards an encounter, rather than away. Fate soon obliged, putting her face to face with another patrol. Who goes there? The lead guard asked, squinting at her. What the? Oh, hiya! Darling? Felicity blinked, trying to talk fashionably like Felicity would. I really must... Bananas, look, it's stupidly undignified being down this low. I was staying up at the top of the castle. Sweets, you know, friends with someone called Felicity, rented one for me, and I was enjoying some fine... Whatever you dudes drink that's fine, when I suddenly fell out of my window. Got kinda soggy, so take me back to my room right now and let me get a hot bath, or I'll hit you with my purse. The guards all looked at her with stupefied expressions before keeling over laughing, bending down and slapping the floor or leaning against walls. The leader, still laughing, met her eyes and managed, You're under arrest. Valet sighed and rolled her eyes. Yeah, that game's my favorite. Then she kicked him in the knee. As the guards slowly realized she intended to fight, Valet swept out the sword, and then it was too late. Another downed patrol... She yawned. Felicity must have been a genius if no one had invaded Stormhoof before. And the point is, she is pregnant with Lord Jire's spawn because fate smiles on me sometimes. Gazelle held Felicity out before the desk like a frustrated doll, pointing to her stomach before a crowd of skeptical onlookers. Gazelle, this isn't important right now, Lord Stormhoof sighed, having joined the meeting late and looking deeply uncomfortable about any discussion concerning Felicity's foal. We know you don't want to become the new Lord Jaya. Stop throwing a fit and leave the determination of heirs for proper proceedings. Gazelle looked indignant. I'm sorry, wait? Excuse you? In case you weren't aware, Felicity and her sisters were trying to flee the Empire. Don't ask me why, ask her, but it's hardly relevant. Maybe the news that a province lord has died doesn't stir you as much as it should have, 
but how about hearing that your favorite defense contractor wants to resign? Lord Stormhoof raised an eyebrow. It's true, Felicity sighed. My sisters and I are finished. We were at the Anridge Embassy when Gazelle caught up to us after discovering what had become of my former... partner. He's one of the few who knows of our liaison and its fruit. Stormhoof narrowed his eyes. We had a lot of impetus to leave, Felicity continued, and still do. Tell me honestly, Lord Everlast, are you going to stand for me remaining this castle's line of defense, knowing who I've been intimately consorting with? I'd be fired anyway the moment the results of a medical- No, 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 don't say that! Gazelle frantically shushed her with a wingtip. Nobody's getting fired, right, Everlast, old pal? She's pivotal to this castle's defense. Lord Everlast gave Felicity a distrustful look. Jaya is not a province that does honest business. This isn't a good strike for her reputation, Gazelle. She's already here on your word alone. Oh, so she is fired then. Gazelle held a paw to his breast, looking wounded. Well, it's your castle, not mine. Not my loss if this place gets taken over by pirates without her around. But it is my loss if she hightails it with this air. And if I were her, I'd be running as fast as I could right now. Lord Stormhoof sighed again. She can be placed under watch tonight. Gazelle, whatever plan you're up to is riding on petulance alone. Please drop this for the morning. Gazelle stood up, carrying Felicity beneath one wing, and walked away. Well, I see how it is. No one even likes Lord Gyre enough to care that he's been murdered. It's all Felicity Vez. Gazelle, you're inheriting Gyre Vad. Blah, 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 blah. As he wandered toward the door, Lord Everlast's brow creased. True words, but he has a point. How did... Lord Jaya die. Gazelle was back at her desk in a heartbeat, grinning toothfully. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Elevator shaft! Scarvely crowed, finally discovering what she had been looking for. A bit of shadow sneaking and she was through the doors, another pile of paralyzed guards behind her, and the stories fell away like turning pages as she flapped onward in her ascent. The dress was starting to bother her, but it was bothering her enemies more, so she didn't bother taking it off. Sword clutched in her jaws, she darted to the very top of the shaft, punched a dimly glowing emergency light to break it, and slipped out through a door. This level did not have guard patrols. Instead, the guards had stations so that when she emerged, she was immediately spotted by three of them. All the targets were in different directions, and these were far smarter than the ones in the lower floors. Rather than rushing her, they shouted and went to get help. Yeah! Tremble in fear, Valet gloated, strolling forward. She tasted the air, smelling only wet bat pony and pondering where to go next. There would be reinforcements soon. She couldn't stomp her way through everyone who saw her anymore. The alarm would be raised, and soon she would have to fight through every last guard in the upper reaches of Stormhoof. She licked her lips. Time to pay the province back for her first ascent. It didn't take long for the first set to arrive. Ten of them. They leveled their spears at her, and Valet responded by holding a sword where they could see it. Stand down, they ordered. That is improper entry. Valet yawned. That's the worst you can hit me with? Yeah, it is. And listen, you know me. Admiral Valet. I'm Felicity's friend. I've been up here to testify. I clean everyone's clocks in the tournament. Right now, you guys have someone I want back. So you can either be a friendly escort and show me around, or get ready to taste a whole lot of pain. At least some of these griffins actually seemed to listen. Elaborate. A valet shrugged. You seen High Prince Gazelle run through here recently? Killed one of my friends, grabbed and stole another? Felicity? I want her back. Where is she? Felicity is out on business, the guard replied. Surrender your weapon and wait peacefully, and we will send a messenger. What this? Valet blinked at the sword. Sorry, you want 
this thing? See, it kind of belongs to a friend of mine. The Griffins all leveled their spears at her. These are our terms. Too bad. Valet was in the air, hurtling toward them, sword outstretched. These ones actually knew how to use spears. She had to feint, clipping the points of two weapons and taking a step in retreat. The guards moved in a practice formation, skilled at repelling attackers from range. But Valet was an expert at getting in, and more importantly, the lights were still off. With a swoosh, she ducked behind them, rising in a spinning slash that dropped half their number. Valet caught a spear shaft as it fell, flipping it and ramming the butt into a guard to make him stumble, before finishing the last ones in quick succession. Nice! Nice! Valet nodded at the paralyzed griffins. Bananas! This is almost boring! Who's next? And that is why it's highly probable the Empire is on the verge of a large-scale Sarusian infiltration and assault, Gazelle finished smugly, folding his paws. I rest my case. Lord Everlast gave him a strange look. I don't know whether to be more concerned that you're treating this like a joke, or that you might be right. Oh, please, Gazelle waved away. Joking is how you know I care. If I didn't, I wouldn't make the effort. He narrowed his eyes. First, Kashiva and our power grid are both taken severely down by a Sarosian mad scientist. Now Lord Jaya is mysteriously assassinated by a poison well known in his own province and shut up, I've studied this. Next thing you know, word's going to get out that you've removed my personally chosen lieutenant from defense duty. The castle is dark and wide open. And all the leaders of both Sarosian voted worst provinces are here for the picking. How do you like swollen windpipes, Lord Everlast? They could be coming for all of us. And by all of us, I mean just you, because I'm savvy about this sort of thing and happen to carry an antidote. Lord Stormhoof eyed Felicity suspiciously. Whatever you're after, Gazelle, come out with it. If we've lost your mayor's loyalty and the power grid is as broken as Meltdown says, I don't see what we can do that you're after. Gazelle put on a white grin. Oh, that's easy. I'm just stalling for time while I wait for the fireworks to start. Gazelle, Lord Stormhoof threatened. It's true, Gazelle shrugged innocently. Like I said, I snatched her clean out of an attempt at getaway. You think she told her contact she was leaving? In fact, I'm surprised we haven't heard any alarms go off already. He raised an eyebrow. If the bottom half of this castle was conquered with no survivors to raise the alarm, would we know? Lord Stormhoof stood up sharply. Gazelle, stop trying to cause a panic in my war room. Take Felicity and go where you please. I don't care whether Lord Jaya has a surviving heir or not. Everlast, take your family wherever you believe is safest. Generals, to me, if any of this reaches the troops on the ground, we're going to have chaos to stamp out. We secure the castle first, and then the island. Wherever I please? Ha <laughs> ha! Gazelle cackled as he left, Felicity in tow. I'll tell you where I please. It's newspaper time, baby. Can you see the headlines already? Lord Everlast fires Stormhoof Keep defense specialist. Immediately gets invaded. <laughs> Chaos is its own reward. As he passed through the door, a runner raced through in the opposite direction, gasping and panting for breath. Sirs, the breathless uniformed griffin exclaimed, Admiral Valet is attacking the castle. The one from the tournament, she's making piecemeal of all of our best cards. Both of Lord Stormhoof's brows rose in alarm. Again? Gazelle nearly fell over laughing and Felicity actually caught him across her back. As the war room erupted in commotion, they both staggered into the hall, where she set him against the wall and then sagged herself. Congratulations, she sighed. We've successfully goaded the same mayor into making an absolute mockery of Stormhoof's defenses twice in one year. You had better be proud of yourself, because when she finds Senesei alive and realizes we tricked her into this, all that power is going to suddenly become our enemy. But did you see Stormhoof's face? Gazelle sobbed, practically clawing at his cheeks to stem his laughter. 
It was worth it. Oh, it was worth it. No one will ever live this down. They'll be too embarrassed to care about Lord Jaya. I'll have one less rival on the stage. You leave Valet to me. Let's just hide a while. Wait for her to cause maximum chaos looking for us. And show up with Senesei in a closet somewhere at an opportune moment, hmm? Or maybe I should go back and annoy them about the power situation more. You're already pushing it, Felicity warned, downcast. Let's go meet her fates quietly. I really did like her, you know. Gazelle grinned, not taking any of Felicity's attitude. Oh, I told you to leave talking valet down to me. Now come on, I feel like singing a catchy song about this. End of chapter 738